So we're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight's question is inspired by Gail Simone, comic writer, gamer, and professional internet troll who recently discovered the world of hobby board games and is totally not a bear. Now, the other day, Gail started a popular tweet thread and hashtag about what she called tea games. The tweet read, Okay, each day when we get up, my beloved husband and I play a quick game while we have our wake up tea. These are our last three tea games. Of course, that went on to talk about three specific games, but that part's not important to this. So, of course, this thread started a flurry of activity on Twitter, as most of Gail's tweets do, with all kinds of people jumping in to suggest their favorite games. Now, sadly, as typical of Twitter and most of the Internet, most of these suggestions were terrible tea games and included games like Power Grid and Pandemic Legacy and Gloomhaven. But the thread overall was an enjoyable read, and it's been wonderful Actually, since Gail got into tabletop games, it's been awesome following her feed and watching her I, I discover this stuff like a little kid in a candy store. Yeah, while Gail certainly has great power as an influencer or troll, and her porch gets the sort of deliveries from companies most people only dream of, it has been really refreshing to see that she truly does love mm -hmm. playing and discovering games even if she doesn't have to hit up her FLGS as often as some of us to enjoy such a collection. True. Now, based on that thread, I thought it'd be fun to play along with this trend and hashtag. Hey, here we get, like, we're, we're all about the new hotness. Not hot new release games, but, like, this is cutting-edge meme that's happening right now. Uh, literally, as we record this, Gail has started another T Games thread. So <laughs> for those of you here live, you can follow along with Gail. Uh, for the rest of you, if you search the hashtag, you can find it. But what we're going to do is we are going to share our favorite tea games. Though, again, in our case, uh, pound hashtag, I can't, I got to stop saying pound. I am so used to saying pound for the pound symbol because I'm old. So in our case, coffee games would probably be the better name. But for now, we'll stick to Gail's nomenclature as she is the influencer here. And nothing, my coffee games is not going to take off the way her tea games will. Now, before we get to the game list, we should talk a bit about what a tea game is. Okay. Now, according to Gail, tea games are short, super fun games that you can play while having a cup of tea. At least two player, under 30 minutes or so, give or take a second cup. All right. For our list, I decided to more focus on just two player games, uh, mainly because her original tweet noted two player games and she kind of refined it after the fact. Now, I will admit, most of the games on our list are not two-player specific. They go either way, but some are. So when building the list, though, I focused on games that specifically Dan and I would could easily sit down with our morning coffee, sit and play a game, or Sean and I could sit down. So many would work for all three of us. As usual, this list is in no particular order. All right, the first game on the list, we're going to go alphabetical. No, no, it happens to be alphabetical. Okay. This was the order I thought of the games. Uh, is Azul, the tile laying game that we were huge advocates for since it came out, um, that we just talked about on our last episode last week about how we still love it. Azul is still such a fantastic game, easily accessible, abstract strategy game that gamers and non-gamers will both enjoy. A game where you do have to think, but it's not a brain burner. It's the kind of thing where we can chit chat and talk about the morning news while drafting and placing tiles. Absolutely. And on top of that, if you laminate the player boards, you can spill your tea on this thing and it'll be fine. There you go. Or just pick up the Azul Crystal Mosaic expansion, which gives you an overlay for your boards. There we go. And that is Azul. Next, I have The Fox in the Forest. And again, every time I mention this game, I have to say how it always blows me away because someone tried to tell me I could get a trick-taking game for two players and it works. I didn't believe it until I actually played the game. I actually tried this as part of Renegade Games Worldwide Game Days in the middle of all our lockdowns. And Deanna and I tried it and fell in love. I managed to go out and get our own copy after trying a copy that was lent to us from Renegade. Really solid two-player trick-taking game that's all about um, not shooting the moon. It's the opposite. You want to take just enough tricks. If you take too many, you get penalized. And if you don't take enough, the other player scores all the points. Really neat game. Perfect for sitting over a coffee, small footprint. You can set this up on your island while your stuff's perking away. And that was The Fox in the Forest. 
Now, for those of you who don't like competition, which is totally fair, early in the morning, you don't want to start an argument that's going to last all day. You can similarly pick up the Fox and the Forest Duet. This is a similar game, but not identical. It features some of the same mechanics, but instead of trying to outdo your opponent, it is cooperative. You basically are playing this tug of war, trying to move a counter on the map to collect tokens. And the way you do that is by taking tricks. So too many tricks one way or too many the other to move the token. This is a really solid, again, it blows me away that there's a two-player trick-taking game, even more so a cooperative two-player trick-taking game that really works. That is the second Fox in the Forest game duet. No, duet says two players. The original is also two player only. Both of them are two player only. The duet just implies uh, cooperative. And that was Fox in the Forest duet. Uh, the next one is a game that we talk about so often that um, Catalyst Game Lab should be sending us a check. Uh, that is the Duke, uh, the current version being the Duke Lord's Legacy. This has been one of my favorite two player games for well, since I started playing it. Now, I got to say, for some people, this might be a little too heavy for a tea game, but because of the number of times Deanna and I have played it, it's nice and quick, and we already know what all the pieces are, and it plays really well. Now, this is a chess-like game where you're trying to capture the opponent's dupe with chess-like pieces that are square tiles, and the really neat part is how they move is right on the tile, and once you move, you flip the tile over, which tends to show a completely different pattern. Now, this has been my personal tea game for years, as my son and I would often play it as I was making my morning coffee when he got ready for school early. So nice. he's a teenager and that doesn't happen anymore, but weekends we can still do it. <laughs> Sounds good. And that was The Duke. Next is a slightly lighter game that feels a lot like The Duke, and that is Onitama. In this one, you've got five pieces on the board on each side on its same size grid as the Duke. And how the pieces move is based on cards. Now, the neat part in this game is that the game only has five cards. I get two, you get two, and one goes in the middle. And after I use a card to move one of my pieces, it then goes to the middle, you get the one in the middle. So what happens is every time I use a move, I end up giving it to you. And then knowing the perfect information is what really makes this game shine. You can always see what all possible moves are. If you want a true chess, like where planning multiple moves ahead is part of the game, you're probably going to like Onitama more than the Duke, whereas the Duke can be highly random because you are pulling tiles out of a bag. And that was Onitama. Sticking with two-player tile games on grids, uh, I have Aqualin. This is a very simple game where you've got a grid and you are placing fish, well, the sea creatures, sea creatures that are different colors. One player is trying to group their tiles by sea creature type. So you want all the fish together. You want all the seahorse together. The other player, though, is trying to group by color. So you want all the red ones together. Gameplay is dead simple. You move a piece that's already on the board by sliding it in a straight line. Then you put it on a new piece. You do that till the board is full, and then you score. That's all there is to Aqualin. And I have to say, my thoughts on this game were completely wrong because I was thinking of the wrong game. I, I was thinking of the game with coral, with the little pieces of coral. Oh, reef. I was yeah. thinking of reef, not Aqualin. That was, this was, we were talking about Aqualin. Yes. Uh, reef could be on your list. If you want lighter games, reef could work. It's just, we didn't love it. Uh, it was okay. It was a neat game. It was well done. But if I want that feeling, I'm going to play Azul or Aqualin. And see, I never, I actually never played Aqualin. That's, so that's I, I was I, missing I out. that. Yeah. So, so a little little uh, sausage making here. Sean's <laughs> notes here are: Does anyone actually enjoy this game? <laughs> it <laughs> was fine. I was, I was imagining fine. it was Reef and Reef. I, I was one of those games where it was like, yeah, if someone was like, hey, we're gonna play this, I would probably sit down and play it, but I would never ask to. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I don't dislike Reef that much. I do like Reef. My kids like Reef. I like playing it with them. So again, it might be a pretty good tea game. But again, Reef is not great two player either. So to me, it doesn't quite make this list. Next, a game that does make the list, obviously, and that is Hive, the hexagonal Bakelite tile game that people like to show off playing everywhere in the world. But one of the places you can play is at the breakfast table. Um, you are playing insects, building a hive out of hex tiles. Each type of insect moves a different way. The goal is to surround the opponent's queen. Uh, you can kind of see a theme here between like the Duke, Onitama, and Hive of these chess-like games that are so simple to play. Hive in particular, I love because, as Sean mentioned earlier, you spill your coffee, you're doing no damage to Hive. You could probably uh, throw your coffee in the frying pan with your eggs and they'll be fine. And that was Hive. 
All right, for those of you who used to like doing crossword puzzles in the morning, is that even still a thing anymore? I know it used to be. My dad was one of those ones who would get up and always do the daily I know, crossword. I, I usually do. Used to, I always started doing them on my phone. I wasn't even. There you, you know. go. So, so for those of you who like a little challenge with spelling in the morning, I've got a little wordy. Uh, the game that shocks me that it comes from Exploding Kittens, because Exploding Kittens games are usually take that and very silly. Whereas this is actually a kind of thinky word game where you are trying to guess the word the opponent made with a set of tiles. And the neat part is you make your word, but then you shuffle it up and give the tiles to the other player. And it's kind of a deduction game where you're using cards to ask questions, like it does your word have vowels or does it have a T in it, stuff like that. This one is well worth checking out. I admit, like coming from Exploding Kittens, I wasn't expecting much. I expected much lighter and silly. And like, take that, right? Stab you in the back where it's not that. It's this really solid two-player quick word-based deduction game. And that is a little wordy. Sticking with word games, I've got Codenames Duet. I always like to point out that this is not a two-player only game, so you could technically play it in teams, but for my tea time game, I would suggest this as two players. This is a cooperative version of Codenames. You got a grid of words, you give your partner a one-word clue and then a number, then they're going to point to as many cards as that number that somehow ties them all together. Codename is a game that's hard to talk about here, but if you saw a copy, I could show it to you and it would make perfect sense right away. This is honestly one of the best two-player games I own. This is a tea time game. This is a date night game. This is a play at coffee shop game. This is a great at bars game. I love Codenames Duet. And that was Codenames Duet. <laughs> Next, a late addition to the list that I totally forgot about until I was going downstairs to grab the games for our backdrop, and that is Ticket to Ride New York. And I think Sean's going to agree with me on this one, is this is a fantastic low player count version of Ticket to Ride that can be played in like 15 minutes that actually gives you the feel of building those routes and trying to complete the, um, the, the ticket cards. It is my preferred way to play Ticket to Ride now. And as I said before, even if you don't like Ticket to Ride, it's such a quick game, you don't hate it. <laughs> it's one way to put it and that was ticket to ride new york i will point out there are other city versions now i have not tried them but there's like amsterdam there's um uh, london and i think san francisco is out now or it's coming soon but any of those should work to fill the same itch uh the next one racco because deanna and i had way too much fun playing this just the two of us at a bar now, I realize the bar part doesn't really go with tea time, but I can totally see you sitting with my coffee, chatting about the day, trying to figure out what appointments there are while just sorting numbers in numerical order. Uh, I, I still i am shocked by how good Racco is for like a game that's been around forever. I'm totally resold on. I'm now like a Racco advocate, which just <laughs> seems weird as a, a tabletop game hobby gamer that I keep talking about this game, but really solid game. Absolutely. Now, it may be a touch long if you play the yeah. full 500 count for T. You Ooh, might yeah. want to knock that uh, knock that then the, the total number down. Just play it. But I mean, it's easy enough to just play a few hands and whoever yeah. has the highest uh, score wins when you're uh, even, when you're talking. Don't even done. keep score. Just play Racco. Racco. Yay. And then Racco, you got one who who won. Do a two out of three. Who are first one to Racco three times or two there times. You know. And can you guess what the game we just talked about was? Well, it was Racco. Yes. Next, I have Revolution of 1812. This is probably the heaviest game on the list. So I, I was a little iffy on this one. I only tried this game recently in the last two weeks. Now, this is a historical game from Steffenfeld and Renegade Games that is actually just a light abstract tile drafting tug of war game. Um, you can toss out the entire theme and just play the game. And it's all about timing uh drafting tiles so that you make sure the other player takes the right tile at the right time to let you take what you want it's probably the best way i can give you a vague overview of this game uh it's all about getting voters on your side and possibly winning over electors while also doing smear campaigns and potentially getting the attention of the press which you do not want in this game uh for a quick overview that's probably about the best i can do but seriously this is probably the quickest, lightest, still fun Steffenfeld game. And uh, this is the Revolution of 1821, isn't it? Oh, I typoed. <laughs> 28, 1821? 18-something. 18 it's not 1812. Uh, it's right behind me. 28. Sorry, 28. 18, there we go. 28. 1828. I knew it wasn't I 1812. 
I typoed the revolution of 1828. Uh, next, a game Sean taught me and I really enjoyed, and that is Jaipur, uh, trading various spices in for points. And then, you know, it's been a while since I played it. There was also something with camels yes. where you would like get a whole bunch of camels to be able to take a whole bunch of cards at once. A uh, really solid two player game, like up there with some of the best two player games I own. Unfortunately, I don't have a copy. Uh, when Sean got me hooked on it, it was out of print and it's back, but I haven't gotten a copy yet. Jaipur, one of the best two player games out there. And it's fabulous both on Board Game Arena and it, there are app versions of it for all the platforms as well. So even if you don't have a second person, you can still play it at tea time all on your own. There that you is go. Jaipur. We're going we're gonna to make our own hashtag lonely tea time. <laughs> then we'll do that. Uh, next is Travel Quirkle. I guess it could be any version of Quirkle, but Travel Quirkle smaller. So I was thinking low, small footprint. Doesn't take up a lot of room on the table. Uh, this is another one, though. It couldn't be longer. If you play a full game to the full point count, you might be pushing that tea time game. You, you might need it. This is this is a third cup morning when you're when you're going to have three cups. Trial travel Quirkle. Uh, Quirkle is basically Scrabble with shapes. You are trying to match. Well, yeah, match shapes or colors and make rows. And if you manage to get all the colors with all the shapes or all the shapes played you get some bonus points for doing it. The scoring is very much Scrabble. It's you're going to add rows and columns. And if you do the neat thing where you throw in the one tile in the middle, you get that count both ways and squares. And it's kind of like, you know, spelling one and two letter words in Scrabble becomes a skill in Quirkle. <laughs> and that is Travel Quirkle. Next is Santorini. Uh, this is one that you just want to leave set up, set up somewhere. Like if you have room at the end of your island or whatever, you are, the end of your counter where you're having your tea, you just leave it set up. It's this like really cool 3D game that has great table presence. Where you get this little island and you put a board on top of it that's just a grid and you're building the buildings of the Greek Isle of Santorini, which are very distinct white walled blue domed buildings. It's a really simple game where you move and you build a layer. And then you can start building up. And the goal is to get your character onto a third story. If you can get to the third story, you win. Of course, the other player is trying to stop you and they can cap you off. And to keep it interesting, there are also Greek god tiles that you can shuffle at the beginning of the game and give each player an asymmetric ability at the start of the game. This is one I think Sean hasn't tried yet that we should break out at some point. No, we, we've gotten close to playing it, but we never haven't actually done it. No. Uh, and that is Santorini. Next, I have Fuse, the game my wife would not play with me at tea time, but I think could be perfect for a couple. This is a real-time game where you are rolling dice trying to match patterns on cards. So it's kind of like a version of Roll For It or the other or King of the Dice, but except it's real-time. And you are just going to roll, and you pull out a bunch of dice from the bag, you roll it, and you draft them between the two players. And it actually plays really well two players. And I forget the timer, but I think it's 10 minutes. So if you're looking for your half-hour game, you're going to spend five minutes taking the game out, setting it up, and opening up the timer. You can, there's an app, or you can use a timer. Then you're going to spend 10 minutes to play, and then you're going to put it away, and there's your whole half hour. Uh, you might even fit in two rounds. Yeah, no, this is an interesting one, but it's definitely one that some people are going to love and some people aren't. Yeah. But that is Fuse. I'd say I think of all these games, Fuse would probably wake me up the most in the morning. <laughs> that that real-time countdown, hurry up, draft that dice, is something to get your blood pumping. Uh, next, I have Yardmaster. We advocate for this one quite a bit. It's so sad that Crash Games is no longer around to actually get you a copy. But if you can find a copy, Yardmaster, this is a card drafting game um, where you're going to pay resources to draft train cars. Very similar to Ticket to Ride in that way. And then you're trying to build the train. The trick is that the train cars will only connect if they match the same number as the previous car or the same color. Any cars that don't fit, you have to store in your yard. Now, the neat part is, is if then later, if you add a train car and the stuff in the yard matches up, it all auto attaches, which leads to some awesome moments where you're like, I have three points. Do I have 12? Because I made the perfect combo and everything paid off. We really enjoy this game, and it plays surprisingly well with only two players. And that was Yardmaster. Next, I have King Domino. This was another late addition to the list. This is a fantastic area building. I don't even know what you call it. It's not really area majority. It's like you're building zones on a map using dominoes, and you're building a fantasy kingdom. And some of these have 
uh, crowns on them that score points and you're going to multiply the crowns by how big of an area you had. But it's all about like, here's an area of fields, here's an area of forests, here's an area of deserts and trying to plan out your kingdom in a really unique drafting system, which two player is fantastic because it's just the way it works where you, I draft a tile, you draft a tile, I draft a tile, you draft a tile. And then the order you took them in determines who's going to draft next. And it just works really well. And I actually recommend you can pick up two copies of this game or get Queen Domino and you can play a bigger version with, I think it's an 11 by 11 map instead of a seven by seven. And to me, that's where it really shines is the bigger map I found really enjoyable. And that is King Domino. And my last tea time game is the Tea Dragon Society card game. Now, Deanna had me toss this on the list as it's one she's played and really enjoyed. This is from Renegade Games, and it's based on the graphic novels and has you creating bonds between yourself and your tea dragon. Now, this one won the Origins Award for Best Family Game in 2019. And I had to throw this on the list specifically for Gail, because come on, it's teas, it's dragons, and it's a graphic novel. Like, isn't this hitting every mark right there? <laughs> and that is the Tea Dragon Society card game. So uh, that last one is perhaps the perfect tea game, as it's a game about actual tea, which leads us to today's honorable mentions which are all games about tea, which are tea games that may not be the perfect tea games. It all made sense, right? You've got what type of tea games? I just realized we could be totally confusing people. They're going to join in and they're going to want to hear about uh, Teotihuacan and Tawa and Sunyu and Zolkin and totally different list of tea games. <laughs> So my first honorable mention is Chai. This is a one to five player game where you become a tea merchant. Uh, it's a little too long and a bit heavy for early morning, but a great theme for a medium weight euro. So this is going to be your evening tea game, and that is Chai. Next is Ceylon, a game about the coffee crisis in Sharank. Uh, I can't say it. Sri Lanka. I don't even know how I got tongue tied on that. Coffee crisis in Sharank. Why can't I do it? Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Ceylon, a game about the coffee crisis in Sri Lanka when a fungus killed off all the coffee and various entrepreneurs set about replacing the coffee plantations with tea plantations. Now, this is another longer one that's also significantly heavier than chai. This is not a tea game, though it is a game about tea. And that was Ceylon. Next is Dinosaur Tea Party. Now, this could have made it on the list, if it wasn't specifically for three or more players. Now, this one really isn't all that much about tea, but rather the people you are drinking with. This is a social deduction game that honestly sounds like a gamer version of Guess Who, where you're going to ask the other players questions that they have to answer honestly, and you're trying to determine who is who. And that was a Dinosaur Tea Party. Next is Steep, Sir, Steep Sears. Steep Sears. I can't pronounce anything tonight. Steep Sears, where you are playing fortune tellers who are reading tea leaves. Talk about a twist on tea games. Now, in this resource management game, you gather ingredients to fuel your visions and earn belief from the people. This one is actually listed as best with four and seems to be a mid-weight euro. So not good for the full list, but an interesting twist on the tea theme. And that is Steep Sears. Then I have Humble Tea Party as our next honorable mention. Now, this is a Japanese set collection game that Deanna discovered that looks like a great abstract strategy game that I think the two of us would really enjoy. This is one of those games where everything you do could help your opponents. So it's all about getting the most, most you can out of your turn without helping the other player even more. And I've got to say, I dig that type of mechanic. It reminds me instantly of the game Lanterns, which is my favorite part of Lanterns, is that whole, well, I want to get the Lanterns, but I got to give everyone else Lanterns. I got to make sure I don't help them too much. And that is Humble Tea Party. Finally, I have Where Am I? Alice in a Mad Tea Party. This game wins for table presence. You actually build a 3D cardboard tea party and you're playing by collecting cups and pots in front of you on the little table. Uh, there's also a deduction element because the whole point of this game is to score enough points without anyone guessing who you are based on what you're collecting in front of you. If you do, 
if someone does guess which character you are from Wonderland, you lose all your points and are out of the game. And that is, where am I? A Alice, Alice in a Mad Tea Party. So that's it for our list of tea games. I hope you've discovered something new to play along with your morning drink. Remember, we're here to answer your gaming and game night questions every week. If you got a question for us, head over to the website and click on Ask the Bellhop or fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. 